Welcome back. This is episode 45, excuse me, 43.6. Now we're going to cut to the chase. The prayer requested by Namkai Ningpo from chapter 4 of this book, Vajra Sound of Peace, practicing the seven chapter prayer of Guru Padmasambhava by the venerable Lamas Kenshin Paldun, Sherab Rinpoche, and Kempo Sewang Dongol Rinpoche. The, for reading for the show, some of this can be tedious. And I don't know that it's going to benefit you to know about all the eight harukas. I'm going to show you their picture, get the book, read about them, get the transmission. That's Haruka Jington Chota. Mopa Drong Dragnak. Prayer to the Lamas of the Longevity Lineage. Prayer to the Mother Lineage of the Vajrayana. Prayer to all the Vajra Lineages. Prayer to the Truth of the Lineage of Cause, Condition, and Result. Prayer to the Truth of the cause, condition, and result is the prayer to the masters of the foundation, foundational teachings of the whole Buddha Dharma, the great teachers of truth as it is on the common sense level. The text here says that the wisdom blessings of all the Buddhas merged with the mind stream of Buddha Shakyamuni. There are 1,000 Buddhas in this fortunate aeon Eon. Buddha Shakyamuni is the fourth of these. Seven Buddhas appeared in the world prior to the advent of this fortunate eon. What the text is saying is that he received the wisdom blessings of the seven prior Buddhas of the previous eon. The three had pre that preceded him in this fortunate eon of the 996 Buddhas still to come. All of these blessings descended to him, we pray to the masters of the past, present, and future who teach the direct, simple teaching of cause, condition, and result as truth. And as all these masters have come together in a single state as Guru Padmasambhava, the second Buddha, we pray to Guru Padmasambhava. Buddha Shakyamuni is a totally enlightened being. No one has higher realization, but from the moment he came into this world, he behaved like a common person. He carried his alms bowl, walked into town on bare feet, just as his students did, and received food. He always said, thank you, and ded dedicated the merit. Then he returned, washed his feet, and did afternoon meditation. He followed the customs of the everyday world. He didn't use his realization prayer to go against it. His wisdom was unlimited, yet he remained humble, simple, and low-key. To the Buddha, the entire universe was the pure land. Ovalo. <clears throat> to the Buddha, the entire universe was the pure land. Akanistha. A- K A N Akan Ish I S H T H A Akanista Totally beyond duality, but to deal with and help other beings he was always respectful and acted accordance acted in accordance with their thoughts and feelings. He showed beings how to achieve happiness and avoid suffering not only for the short term but forever. He was the teacher of truth, the one who speaks of things entirely as they are and leads others to increasingly positive situations and states of mind. Like Buddha Shakyamuni, the great Bodhisattva Shantara Shita was 
also humble, simple, and compassionate, even though he was totally enlightened. He was so peaceful and gentle that the Tibetan people called him Bodhisattva. Here's his picture. is Bodhisattva Shantara Kishita. Their histories record his first meeting with the king. He was very humble and paid homage. Then he took the king's hand. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? He asked the question three times while holding the king's hand. The king answered, no, I don't remember because I haven't done enough meditation. The king knew, of course, that Shantara Kishita was the teacher of Buddhism. That's why he invited him to Tibet. So the king asked, what do you teach? And Shantara Kishita replied, I teach cause, condition, and result, that which is suitable and reasonable, I teach. That which is unsuitable and unreasonable, I avoid. Shankara Kishita avoided, ask, Shankara Kishita asked King Trisong if he remembered him because long ago in a previous lifetime they had vowed with Guru Padmasambhava and Dorje Dudjam, D U D J O M, D O R J E Dorje, D U D J O M, and the Guru Padma Sambhava and Dorje Dudram had promised to bring the Dharma to Tibet. Shantara, Shantara Kishita had already extended his current life by several centuries so that he could be alive during King Trisong's time in order to fulfill his vow. So in addition to being a Bodhisattva, Shantara Kishita was also a great realization being. The teachings say that he was an emanation of Vudra. Vajrapani Buddha, but again on the external level, he was humble, simple, and gentle. The final section of chapter 4 from Vajra Sound of Peace. Prayer to the Lamas of the Oral Transmission Lineage. We have reached the concluding verses of the lineage prayers. These verses highlight the Lamas of the Oral Transmission Lineage. At the beginning of the chapter, in the very first stanza, Guru Padmasambhava gave Namkai Ningpo the prayer to the mind-to-mind -mind transmission lineage. From the second stanza on, he gave prayers to the symbolic transmission lineage. Now in this stanza, he clearly mentions the oral transmission lineage, the oral transmission lineage, from the realization of the wisdom mind of all the bodhisattvas and vidyaharas. The blessings are continually bestowed on all fortunate beings during the degenerate age, even until the end of the age of Buddha Shakyamuni. To the end, excuse me, to the oral transmission lineage of past, present, and future, we pray. To Padmasambhava, we pray. These are lineage prayers requested by the great master Namkai Ningpo. He also asked Guru Padmasambhava for prayers that would help him experience all forms, sounds, and thoughts as being in the enlightened state so that he was never distracted, that he experienced everything as part of the enlightened state, nirvana and samsara, one and the same. Padmasambhava gives four standards, stanzas of teaching for that very purpose. What is the essence of these four stanzas? Whatever thoughts arise, liberate them instantly into the true nature. These four stanzas contain what are traditionally known as the 21 lines that point out the true nature of the mind. These four stanzas of the prayer to the Lamas of the oral transmission lineage, of the prayer that he gave of four stanzas of teachings that all form sounds and thoughts would be experienced as being in the enlightened state. These four stanzas contain the 21 lines that point out the 
true nature of the mind. They are Dzogchen Great Perfection teachings. We have given the essence of these stanzas. Later we'll explore them in great detail. First we will go over the teachings of the great Siddha and scholar Karma Chagme, C-H-A-G-M-E, on how to visualize the great, great masters mentioned in the lineage prayers. May the mind of clear light be yours for the remembering, re-remembering. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing.